We are live. Uh, Tata.co. We are ready there, Alexander McKig. Yeah, we're live. So anybody that's on any sort of stream right now and they're interested in uh, understanding what's going on here at the studio, we're at a brand new studio. Yes. Here in Santa Fe, New Mexico. Happy to be here. Happy to have everybody back here on Tartle Cast. Thank you very much. And we'd like to thank everyone that is a buyer and seller on the Tartle Marketplace for helping push humanity forward um, in our consciousness evolution in data sharing format. So we got a really interesting uh, newscast we want to talk about today. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah. The White the White House. Um, the U- in United its, States. Of the United States. Why do we call it that? The White, <laughs> I, in its infinite glory. Um, yeah, the White House in its infinite glory came out with a uh, really interesting blueprint here. So they, they published some things that they hope will drive policy. You know, they do a bunch of research. Like, what are the critical things here for us as a nation that will set us apart and really help, you know, any of the constituent uh, – supposedly sovereign beings like you and I as citizens of the United States, um, as we continue to interact more with technology, what can we look at in a policy forward approach that's going to be to our benefit? So the White House published a blueprint for an AI bill of rights. AI is an artificial intelligence. And the subtext here is making automated systems work for the American people. 73 American pages. corporation? Or- yeah, for the Amer- <laughs> Make it work better for the corporation here. <laughs> You know, and uh, so they, they published a 73 page document, very large one. Um, you know, it's got a fat table of contents, you know, technicalities. You have the whole thing there. Safe, effective stuff. I got the whole thing here, which will slowly find its way into the shredder after we realize that half of this stuff is just absolute um, uselessness. But in the forward, I just want to open up with this first paragraph and then we can, and then we'll comment on it. And you can bring us through really the three main chunks of what we're looking at here in terms of the blueprint for uh, AI. Yeah. Uh, safe and effective systems. Oh, okay. Yeah. Screw the forward. You can go first. Yeah. <laughs> I heard what you said, but I was like, <laughs> I heard what you said, but I didn't process it. My AI is failing, <laughs> bro. If we're going to rely on my AI. <laughs> oh my gosh. Absolutely. Plus I read the comment. That was funny. Yeah. And no, this is great. You know, I love yeah, that we open up the live comments like this. Yeah. They're always, they're always fun. Always trash talking. Yeah. Uh, it's really healthy group we got here. So among the great challenges posed to democracy today is the use of technology, data and automated systems. Ways that threaten the rights of the American public. First of all, if you're talking about automated systems, they're designed by the American public. Unless it's a system that's been designed by the United States government, like X key score, Mm -hmm. to essentially spy on people. But if you're talking about these automated systems here, one that the police choose to use, designed by independent third-party contractors where they license this technology from them, in a scanning people's faces against, you know, their free will without their consent, that's an issue, Right. But if we're looking about the safety security and a system being automated, well, what is it that's really attacking people? Where's the issue drones. actually lie? Oh, is it drones? Artificial intelligent drones. Okay, so it's the AI with the drones. You know, but I mean, I, I think it's more than that. What people don't realize, and I, and this is something that that I think you we we talk to a lot of AI companies, mm-hmm. Turtle, and it's this whole idea of being this mean teacher. We've all had mean teachers, mean teachers. That's passive aggressive, always over your shoulder, getting ready to throw a ruler on your hands. Mm-hmm. Remember back in the day, they would hit you with the ruler on your fingers or whatever, you know, it's like they t- don't do that anymore, but it's that cruel, passive aggressive Orwellian, like, always yeah, looking over, yeah, you yeah. know what I mean? Like 1984 approach, even though it's 2022. And I think that that first sentence that you said, I think is so important because it's, it's totally opposite of what the real intent is well because you know when you when you think about uh american rights here the idea is that you know you're you're king in your own castle you're a sovereign being with specific liberties and you can walk around as long as you don't break any laws you know and you can make your choices but they're saying that the actual technology is a threat Mm -hmm. to people's rights which in some senses if someone's creating systems that are spying on people Watching 100%. on them without consent, yeah. with any without a right to privacy, which is a huge thing in the, here in the United but States. But their their systems, the government systems, aren't a threat to us, though, right? No, they're, they're saying, saying they're saying <laughs> number the number one issue right here. They're saying is unchecked social media data collection. Oh, that is, this is in the first paragraph. First of all, um, how about the CIA doing things on domestically on uh, American soil? Don't push this over on social media. First of all, social media people are participating in social right. media. 
And two, social media companies can't sell people's personal information. They can only share, you know, like in a sense of what a, like a meta profile would be. Like these are characteristics of Jason Rigby or Alexander McKegg. They're not selling my personally identifiable info. It's illegal for them to do so. How about the United States government sign up for Tartle and allow people to choose what to give and they be the example. The United States government be the example for governments across the globe to give people back the power of data, their data that they've created, that they've worked for. How about you start there? Instead, what they've done, Facebook, how much information does the United States government have on me compared to Facebook? So much more. So much. Like an unbelievable amount, right? And that's the stuff that we know about. I, I'm not being conspiracy theory here. It, it's been proven over and over and over again. I mean, how many whistleblowers have came out? So many. With data. Tons. Yeah. From Cambridge so, Analytica and, you know, like. Edward it's like Snow. the, it's like the, uh, I mean, this is like the wolves. This is like two wolves keeping track of a, a, of a pin of sheep. And they're trying to tell each other. They're trying to create rules of, of how they're going to kill the sheep. <laughs> that's all it is. That's literally all it is. And it says using technologies and ways to reinforce our highest values. Whose values? American values? Government values? The people who create the technologies values? What are those determined by? There's no narrative input from the individuals yes. to actually talk about how that technology should develop. Yeah. Who determines that? Who determines it? Some policymaker who absolutely has zero idea how to even use the tech itself. Yeah. It's, it, Do, most for the grand majority of individuals out there, no one knows how AI works. They're no. completely clueless. Yeah. Reverse propagation. People would be like, what's that mean? How does a neuron fire on the brain? I got no idea. But you're saying these systems are created, creating these sentient things that are going to do damage to us. AI today is in the most infant stages. Mm, mm -hmm. And we are starting to lay these foundations. And the foundations for AI at this very moment are ones that collect massive amounts of information and try to process that as efficiently as possible to give some sort of predictive outcome. And it fails most of the time. That's why a lot of these issues have shown up because you see racial injustices because AI systems are tracking people's faces without consent and then telling the cops they should go arrest that person because what? They're black? Yes. Or they're Muslim? Right? It's looking at them in a cultural sense and appropriating some sort of negative value and then flagging them to say they need to go get picked up. They need to go get a stop and frisk. That stuff's incorrect. Or the fact that I'm trying to participate in a system of free speech and then someone's going to bar me from that. Why? Because the AI flagged my ad saying that I was trying to do some sort of political move, but in all truth, there's nothing about it. What I was saying is political. Yeah. It's almost the AI is apartheid system. Of course it is. Yeah. And, and so it, and it doesn't have any consciousness at all. Zero. No, no matter what people say, that's not true. It doesn't have consciousness. It's just repeating things back, learning. It's machine learning. Machine learning off of yes. algorithms, which a human being designed. Yes. So somebody came in with their half-baked values, not really understanding what's best for themselves, but they're going to determine for the rest of the group what's best for them. Am yeah, I wrong? See, that's the problem. And I think this is where this is where we get into um this is where you, when we come to like elections, let's say that. And I'm not going to get political here. I'm just going to talk about this sounds political. Yeah, but it's like social media getting involved in determining elections. Okay. Who determines that? Because here's what happened. When, when when social media companies decided to do something or not do something, either way. It, and it can sway an election or not sway an election. I'm not saying I'm not I'm not being political, but I'm saying who made that decision to turn up the algorithm or turn down the algorithm? A human did. Yeah, the technical designers of the algorithm. So so you know whether Mark Zuckerberg said this the other day on an interview, he said that that the FBI came to him, uh, and this is the CEO of Facebook, Meta. The FBI came to him. He said this on an interview. Came to him and told him that this was rushed to send information. So don't have this on Facebook or, or so they didn't take it off of Facebook. They just let it, they had the algorithm they didn't pump it up with the algorithm. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. They let the algorithm because if it takes like, it off, then it, that's so they harsh. decreased it, turned the little decrease knob. I mean, why it, is that not the same damn thing as the government just coming in saying, shut this off. But that wasn't the AI making that decision. No. It was a group of humans from the government and the social media company making that decision. It's not the, a the AI's 
going to respond to what a human input is. So then what happens? It strong arms the public perspective. But if I, I can blame, see, here's the problem with this. I can blame AI and not blame me as the human. The responsibility falls on a freaking human being. Every single time. Do you know how many systems out there, people selling AI stuff are saying, oh, we'll increase efficiency of your systems by 98%. But uh, just so you know, a human has to come in and check that the algorithm is still running properly and make adjustments. <laughs> you know, like once a week. So what's going on here? The human is still 100% in control. It's not yes. free-floating AI that's just making decisions that are in the best interest yes. of the people it's supposed to be delivering a service to. 100%. It's reinforcing biases, paradigms, and perspectives that are all at negative. So when I look at these blueprints right here, who is this actually benefiting? So let's go over some of these three main categories. Yeah, this is interesting. Safe and effective systems. It says you should be protected from unsafe or ineffective systems. Okay, let me stop right there. Well, what the hell? Well, for okay, unsafe. Okay, I within the government needs to shut down. <laughs> yeah, because they are unsafe and ineffective. And totally, how many, how many ineffective systems do they have? Tons. Of them. <laughs> Go to the DMV. <laughs> oh, this is so funny. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. We still issue social security cards that are paper. Oh, dude, don't don't give me a I, library I can't. card. No, oh, <laughs> stop it. No, but what's this unsafe? That's obvious. Nobody wants to deal with something that is unsafe, right? Something right. that causes harm to another human being. Yeah, but, but then there's there's levels of that of like it's this, because because I can say let me keep you safe, and so now I have I already a right feel unsafe. to go against your free will. I already feel unsafe. Do you see what I'm saying? Of course. Why? Safety is always that comfort, and safety is always the way that any government, any government that's you guys are listening from all of the countries. Yeah, two hundred some countries. Any government, that's where they hit you with. The safety and the comfort. Right. Like, I'm going to keep you in the state of fear, but don't worry. Right. I'm here to take care of you. Yes. When yeah. you call upon us, we'll show up in 25 minutes to an hour, maybe. Government is force. It's always, that's the whole point. It's, it's, to, it's create. Period. That's all it is. Policy to change how people make choices. That's it. Yes. It's a regulatory framework that goes against every aspect of your free will. That's the, do, that's and the definition. And it, of it's a collective group of people deciding to allow this force to be in effect as far as to build roads or to have a, a fire department. Correct. You know, because one individual can't do that. So if we collectively, I mean, fire departments are socialism. You think about it, like the whole system involved in that. We all take a group of money. We put it together. So that people can have, fight fires. Yeah. So that people can it fight. It used to be a private system back in the early day. And you have yeah. to hang like a horseshoe or something on your house. I forget what it was. <laughs> Some weird object on your door to say, yeah, we pay for the fire department to come save us if our house burns down. Listen to this statement. Who? who? Well, no, go after what's after unsafe. First, ineffective systems. Okay. First, all right. What is ineffective and what is unsafe? Both of these things are so highly qualitative. Who's defining? Does the American public get input on what's defining what's safe or effective for themselves? I know what's safe and effective for me. But again, is who's deciding that a system gets some sort of ethical and moral benchmark for safe and effective? Who's deciding what that is? Is there anything in here that states that the American public is going to be Every single person is going to be asked and measured. When's the last time the census has gone out and said, how do you feel about AI? How do you decide what feels safe for you? Has anyone ever asked you that? Has your local government ever asked you, what makes you feel safe? What makes you feel unsafe? Has any of them ever asked, are we effective? Or the military industrial complex makes me feel unsafe. <laughs> yeah, it makes me feel unsafe. We live in the heart of it here in New Mexico, you know? I mean, that, that in and of itself is like... Uh... An ineffective system. No. Listen to this next line. So they go from that zinger. I love zingers. To this one. Automated systems should be developed with consultation from diverse communities, stakeholders, and domain experts to identify concerns, risk, and potential impacts of the system. Okay. What it? For, so, hold on. Who's the community? How are you going to engage them? Should is a great thing. Should. They're not saying it has to. We're only suggesting that you should ask the public for input. But who are they going to go to? Domain experts. Mm -hmm. The people that are already writing the algorithms yes. that are screwing people and their rights. Yes. What are they going to do? Oh, let's go to them. They're going to know best. So that because I understand the whole diverse community. So and we'll we'll use this. Obviously, you're going to go to the Muslim and black communities in some of these larger cities where you have. Right here, black, Latino, indigenous, and Native American, women, girls, non-binary people, lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, queer, intersex, LBGTQI plus persons, older adults, people with disabilities. And did you know these communities also include people in rural areas and persons otherwise 
adversely affected by persistent poverty or inequality. That's the entire United States. It's not communities. Yes. Every yes, that, single person here it's, in America. It's being a human. It's just being a human. It doesn't matter if you're a furry or you're anything. It doesn't Who matter what you identify. Are. Who cares? Everybody needs to have a voice in this process. Not who the government decides. Let's just choose a statistical amount of a thousand people. Yes. You need 300 million participants stating over a 95% confidence level that this is exactly what they want. How are you going to engage with them? Just real quick. How would you do that? What's 330 the, million people? How what would system I currently engages to all these people with cell phones that live across the United States? How would you collect that information? We can't even vote right, bro. What's the best way to do it? <laughs> Giant logo right yes, here. Yes, yes. The government could have a data Bring packet built in 15 minutes and start getting this information directly from the United States. All the constituent people. Yeah, and they could. They could. I mean, think about this. The United States is one big diverse community. Yeah. Stakeholders, because they said diverse communities. Stakeholders. Who are stakeholders? Yeah. I mean, well, I mean that that's the people that are funding it. The people that are uh, that the scientists. The data scientists, mm -hmm. the AI scientists, um, the domain experts would be, you know, that those experts in that specific industry, which we already talked about them. Sure. To me, you know, um, people would be number one. Uh, uh, th th this is good. Diverse communities, number one. Stakeholders, Correct. number two. Domain okay. experts, number three. To identify concerns, risk, and potential impacts of the system. My question is, sometimes, sometimes you don't realize the potential impact of a system until that system is running. Yeah, of course you can't do that until it's actually in play. Otherwise you have no experience to it. Yeah. You don't realize that, uh, facial recognition is turned racist until it starts running. Yeah. You know what I mean? Then Unless you ask then the then guy writing the algorithm, are, are you a racist? And what's yeah, he going to say? No. no. Yeah. But, and then all of a sudden it's, it, people are getting arrested that are totally innocent. Yeah. Your algorithm says otherwise. Yes. Yeah. You put that guy in the hot seat. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Who Take gave that him the command expert. over the big fire about the you know? domain expert? Yeah, let's yeah, talk about expert. shades of skin, bro. Yeah. Um, systems should undergo pre deployment testing, risk identification, and mitigation. Okay. This Duh. Is, right. Uh, before I pre deployment testing. Yeah. Pre deployment. W what are they doing in the military? Let's oh, go always, in a yeah. in a structured format. Let's go test yes. this in a small yes. area before we blow this thing wide open. No pun intended. Yes. Pre deployment testing. Risk identification. So how do you identify the risk? Well, you got to use it first. Yes. Th th this, is, this is kind of military talk here. That's military talk. Yeah. And then because we would do that, we always identified the risks. You know, you'd have uh, pre-deployment. We'd have briefs and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And then mitigation. You know, what's going to happen? How do we mitigate? You know, what's the <laughs> worst case scenario? Shut it off. <laughs> yeah, shut it off. In ongoing monitoring that dim I, I think the Willy Wonka off. factory. Cut it down. <laughs> Hit the Willy Wonka factory. Yeah. <laughs> Cut off. And mitigation and ongoing monitoring that demonstrate they are safe and effective based on the intended use, mitigation of unsafe outcomes, including those beyond the intended use, and adherence to domain specific standards. Okay. There's only one system in this world that can come in, survey, retarget, and do this sort of analysis. It's called TARTLE. Yes. There's no way to engage, re-engage over and over to do these studies on risk analysis and making sure that the benchmark determined by the people which these systems are here to support are actually doing their intended job. I want to know who's creating the domain-specific standards. The domain experts. <laughs> the ones who are already creating the algorithms that cause this entire paper to be written here on the AI Bill of Rights. Why are you bringing in the individuals who screwed it up in the fir first place to write what the Bill of Rights would look like? We have a Bill of Rights. And this is, yeah, we already have a Bill of Rights. And why does the AI Bill of Rights need to occur? It's a total misnomer. This is just a reflection of, again, needing to reinforce the rights of human beings already in the United States. Get rid of the word AI. Now, what you're doing is you're saying we need to integrate. This idea where technology has developed so much that we have to continue to uphold those values. Well, I mean, also, you know, you have to do uncomfortable testing with AI in the sense of you, you want to create bad outcomes and you want it to, you, yes. you you have to. It's like, okay, well, let's make this AI extreme racist. Yeah, so and you then know what how, not to do. Yes, exactly. Yeah, I mean, that, that's they call that in the AI world where they get like bad data on purpose. Yeah. They have a name for that. I well, it's like going it's to Turtle and creating a data pack and asking people to lie. Yes. Thank you very much. Now we have a barometer of what lying looks like. Yes. Yeah. Thank exactly. you. Exactly. You should be protected from inappropriate or relevant data use in the design, development, and deployment of automated systems. 
and from the compounded harm of its reuse. Here's my problem I have with this. Tell me if I'm too philosophical. Mm -hmm. Who's protecting me? That's what, what if I choose? I should have the right to choose to have data that harms me. It's your choice. If I want to read, me. if I want to read something, if I want to read Marxist material, communist material, patriotic American material, um, whatever it may be, if I want to read any of those things, that should be my right. That information should be provided to me. It's not for you to choose how I drive my car. It's it's like, or if I'm going to smoke a cigarette. It's like the machine learning and the AI, uh, Ari Shafir, which is a funny comedian, he did a, a test on YouTube. I think I told you this. So on YouTube, all he did was watch cat videos. Mm -hmm. And guess what the algorithm gave him? Cat videos. It didn't suggest anything else but cat videos. Yeah. So the, it's the heart of the in-person, the intent of the person. This, These AIs and machine learning are just copying. But they're reinforcing your intent. Yes. Yes, 100%. So if you're if you're talking about making sure that I'm getting safe material, I determine what's best for me because China, you know, uh, they, they choose what's safe and not. And this is the slippery for slope right here. That, Yeah. This is a slippery slope because they're choosing what's best for everyone. Like this is unsafe. So, and th they're in bed with technology to the point of saying like, no, you guys aren't going to do that. It's you know, like, that's unsafe. That, that doesn't promote our party. This is Patriot Act 2.0. Yeah, for technology. Why? Yeah, for technology. Oh, yeah, but you know, it, no, this is best for national security. We can't show you this information. Uh, this algorithm is not going to be able to do this because it's not best for you. How much is being obfuscated? How much of the internet, right, in this wealth of information is actually being hidden? How much of what I want for me is actually being limited? Why is it for you to decide what happens in my evolution? This AI Bill of Rights is fundamentally a restraint. Checks should be in yes, how the AI yeah. is developed, right? The machine. Uh, but I, I honestly don't think. I mean, we're using Facebook and, and Twitter and all these platforms right now to go live. I honestly don't think Mark Zuckerberg is sitting there in his office at home because he works at home now and his kids are running around and stuff like Good that. For him. And I honestly don't think he's sitting there with his hands going. <laughs> no, why would he do? How that? can I have more control? No, that's he, correct. He said it. He goes, "I started this for colleges for kids to kind of." Keep updated on what's going on and relationship, and it turned into <laughs> this, this massive thing. Yeah, but then that, what that happened is is so big it's hard to even control. He said that. Well, that yeah it becomes its own organism. So, what do you do fundamentally if you're going to have an algorithm that's going to be so large and be appropriated across so many technologies? The fundamental base, techno technologically, has to have restraints built into it into the algorithm. Before this thing starts to grow. But the government shouldn't be involved in those. Restrictions. No, they don't need to be. To Why? me, I mean, I'm a free market person. So, oh, of course, I, I think people, the personal opinion, I think people can make those decisions. And if you choose to, to listen to wrong information, whether that's your extremely choice. right or extremely left, that's your choice. If you don't want to do the research, that's your choice. And it's fine. If you want to believe, that's your choice. Go for it. Why does it have to have so much dogma behind it? It doesn't have to. Why, why, why can't machine learning and AI... If it's a subservient to that individual and it's becoming more personalized, if that individual's not a good person, it's well, going to dish up not good things. So what should I do? Dish up all these positive things and uplifting stuff? If well, the that's what China's doing, see? Well, hold on. If the person isn't going out and seeking self-help books, yeah. why are you going to dish this stuff up? They have zero interest. Right. And in, a, in an efficiency sense, you're just wasting time and energy. You're just driving resources to something that's going to have no payback for it. Well, you. I mean, I, I'm, I'm going to use this. I think this is a perfect example. I have a friend of mine who he likes, he loves to send videos of people falling. Well, that's somebody that's having physical harm done to them. Yeah. So why you enjoy but, it? But yeah. wh why does he enjoy it? One, why do I sometimes, like somebody runs into a glass door at a supermarket or whatever? Yes. And then I start laughing. You know what I mean? It's like, so if I watch one of those videos on social media, that's creating unsafety for that person because they slammed into a glass door. Yep. Hopefully they didn't get hurt, but you know, I've done it personally. So do I've done time. screen doors, glass doors. Nothing upset, you know, nothing like because I, I don't pay attention half the time. So I'm like nothing running upset, into stuff, tripping. Nothing upsets me more when I'm walking, grounds flat, and I trip yeah. on something that's just a little bit higher than where I was walking. But that person that's watching those videos, are, are they an evil person? No. Do they need to be protected by the government? No. Do you need to <laughs> remove the ability? Or how? What, what if somebody is surfacing videos of government or public figure atrocity, and then it gets taken down? How about the government come to Tartle 
and say, hey, what does a data bill of rights look like? Now we're talking. To the people and for the people. Yeah. And let's have that conversation. But you want to understand all these governments, any government, get a hold of us. We'd be more than happy to have a conversation with your citizens. We spoke to the European Union. They were blown away with how Turtle was designed. The yes. fact that it's so much rights, responsibility, ethics, and morals were technologically built into the system to uplift the people that are actually generating that mm -hmm. data, the ones that are participating in products and services globally. They were shocked. They didn't know something like this existed. Yeah. And people should know that Tartle in and of itself is we're technologically barred from having special privilege over people's data. If we want it, we have to be participants in our own marketplace. What other systems are out there that do that? Nothing. Government's yeah. like, oh, we can dip in. Centralized, yeah. Yeah, any sort of those major centralized systems, oh, we can dip in. We can just mess with this stuff. It's, people already gave it to us. It's already here on our Well, service. it's it's like I said, it's the wolf with blood on its yeah. cheek in the sheep's pen pointing at the other wolf that has blood on it. Yeah, yeah. But that other wolf, to me, the other wolf, it may be the eight one sheep or two sheep, but it has an eight ten thousand. Yeah, it's like calling the other. It's like painting the other kettle black or pot. I don't know how the saying goes. It doesn't matter. But yeah. it's like I heard somebody say the other day. They're like, "Yeah, China, 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 so bad, so bad, so bad." It's like how many countries have they invaded? <laughs> yeah, like they're not invading anything. You guys are invading everywhere. I think you had uh, in the forties or fifties. You had uh, like uh, Tibet. Yeah, but other than that, I mean, how many countries has the United States? The, the token of freedom in the world. It's not the token of freedom. We're an absolute <laughs> hegemony. Everything you look at here, just recognize that we have perverse systems and we send arms to people all over the world. It's just obvious. Well, the next one we're going to get into is um, for our next episode. Da -da -da, next. Uh, what's it like? Dr. Dre or something. Yeah. Next, drop into the. Well, we don't have to. We don't have to go anywhere. We're live. I'll just sit right here right now. We'll just keep going through this. Algorithmic discrimination protection. Yeah. What is that? <laughs> I don't even want to go to another episode. I'm so fired up about this right now. Okay, here we go. Let's get into this is discrimination protection. Again. Um, I already feel discriminated against just reading this nonsense. You should not face discrimination by algorithms and systems should be used and designed in an equitable way. Now, here's the problem. Here's the problem. Who decides this? That's what I've been. That's the, the people what, should decide. this. People should just why? Because if I'm getting discriminated against, that means someone's telling me something that I don't think I am or know that I am. But, but. My my view of discrimination may be different from you. Yes, that's correct. So, for instance, I'm white privileged male, right? Sure. I, mean, I was homeless and very lived poorly and all that. Thank but you for sharing just, your story. Just, I yeah, yeah. That. Just because that was very nice I'm white and I'm privileged, mm -hmm. I do not understand what a person of color goes through. I could never understand. I don't. I can't understand that. I was born a six foot five white male with blue eyes. How am I supposed to understand people that are? economically impoverished of a different race yeah. that are and they have injustices against them all the time. How am I supposed to determine what's best for them? I know the value of human rights. So my question is all these people of color, uh, not for profits and stuff like that. Why are all these Karens taking them over? <laughs> that, that's for them to decide. They need to make the decisions, not privilege white people. Yes. We are our own best barometers of ourselves. And, and if we can speak to them that are living in the, the communities, I don't know what it's like to live in Detroit. I don't know. In, I've in lived in North Philadelphia. I know it's hard. I've seen the pains people go through, but that is not my life. Mm -mm. That is a life that they're. But how, how do I go into that government housing complex and have a conversation with them and get true information? Not listen to a Karen talk about blah, 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 how horrible it is and how bad it is when she just got done yelling at Starbucks person because her latte was not the right temperature. And she said in her heated seats to get to the microphone. Yeah. I need to talk to those people that are living. I, that. I need a real narrative coming from those people saying, this is my life. Yes. This is how I want to evolve. This is what is best for me. And this currently within my life is not working. And this algorithmic discrimination protection, this is coming from the government wanting to protect you. Yeah, but the, the government does a horrible job at any of this. Can we look at this logically right now? First of all, <laughs> is your life, if for these individuals in these more impoverished areas, are things working for you right now? No. So why would you need the government to come in in an AI bill of rights and decide that we're going to make something work for you when it comes to digital stuff? The, these uh, poor communities of color, whether you've had a Republican mayor or you've had a Democrat mayor, how have they helped your community? They're still poor communities. Since the 1960s, bro, or, or even before that. 
but there's been no benefit. So when I read this, all this, this is just an absolute farce. There's nothing here that's truly valuable. Nothing here says, tell me about you. Tell me what is best for you. If this is being determined for them, what is best for these groups? I think there's, you know, like for me, like with Facebook, I think you decide if they're under 18 or they're above 18. That's the only filter I would really have. That's you it. have to protect children because they don't have a full or 21 it gets abused all group, the time you know, because of the pineal gland yeah you know like their full that full development the maturity level so you have to protect that other than that going through and creating these legal protections that sounds like a nightmare if you're a corporation you have an ai and you have to run to these 70 something pages and then have your legal team go over this i i, I mean I, I, there's a lot that corporations do wrong i get that when you have this is the funny part on a public company mm-hmm. i've never understood this why they have to perpetually make more yeah why like, like always it's always shareholder value yeah. create more yeah what does it cost people every to quarter what's the percentage of increase make decisions that are not beneficial for the constituent right. people that participate in those products or services yeah so it causes people to toe the line and make things that are unethical choices so so now you're going to add more you already have that pressure put on it's on a corporation yeah and now you're going to add all this regulatory dis, um, discrimination laws that are benefiting only one thing that's just creating more bureaucracy yeah. making the government bigger that's all it's doing it's all not helping the communities it's not helping those people that need it the most this whole list of you know uh disability veteran status uh childbirth pregnancy related medical conditions gender identity intersex status i get all that here's the mo- religion i get all that that, that that's that's what america is made of diversity right. that's what we want to be no and here's the issue here this thing is like one of those compliment sandwiches It says, designers, developers, and deployers of automated systems should take proactive and continuous measures to protect individuals and communities in an equitable way. Obviously. Yes. But let's go down to the bottom here. Independent evaluation and plain language reporting in the form of an algorithmic impact assessment, including disparity testing results and mitigation information, should be performed. So there's no re- there's no proper oversight. There's no self checks that people are putting in place. They're saying you should act in a good manner, in good faith. And then sometime run some sort of analysis to make sure that it's okay, should be performed and made public whenever possible. You tell me, keep all these things private. And only if you feel like it, tell the public how the algorithm actually works. We'll tell you how every single algorithm works here at Tartle. Yeah. We'll walk you through the entire thing. We've already done it. There's nothing to hide. This here tells me that go ahead and hide it. You know, whenever possible, share with the public how you designed this thing. Well, this was this was interesting in this conversation with Mark Zuckerberg. Um, that he, he was asked that question: Why not just open the algorithm and let it be open? Um, he goes, "Well, companies would come in and just spam, like it'd just be spamming constantly on there." Mm-hmm. But to me, you could have an open algorithm and then have spamming. Yeah, just have criteria in yeah, there. Criteria. Like you're, you're only a company's only limited cop to out post of, cop out of three times a day. Total, you know, or out. something. Yeah, it seems so. That seems such a, a simple. So it's like. Whenever, whenever I'm controlling the algorithm to the point of it not working for the people that I serve, yep, which is the billions of people on Facebook mm-hmm. that Across we're talking the globe. right now, yeah. yeah. Whenever, whenever I'm controlling that, and my intention is to monetize that at the sake of a person's free will, yeah. Now we have a problem, yeah. And this is not just Facebook, or not just Twitter, or any of these social media companies. Google, you got DeepMind, you got the, you know, all that. They're looking at the the language, you know, um, you know, GTP three is open, yeah, you know. But you're gonna have, if we don't get this right now, here's what's gonna happen: you're gonna have the government and large, huge tech companies controlling your narrative. You don't want that, especially when we get into metaverses and we're throwing on, you know, Oculus. You know, we're throwing on when all of your sensory um perception that are going on do you think it's bad managed. enough that we're scroll 50 times on instagram a wait day? till you're scrolling it's already on your it's on your face yes you don't see anything and else sensing. that's going on yes, yeah. yeah you have haptic feedback systems like it's ready player one <laughs> yeah there's one way to control the narrative for you tartle hands down it's the only system out there right now globally open public totally transparent full record of exchange of consent where you are the person who has total choice over everything you do, what you choose to share, what chooses to be said, when it is said, and to whom. 
And that in and of itself, when, when you allow the free will of people to be able to make these decisions, mm-hmm. the decision may not be right. Whoever make some government on said that that's right or wrong. That decision is made by the people though. It's the people's choice. And, and, that, and that's their conscience that evolved to that point. Aren't the government supposed to be in favor of the people, not tell the people what to do? Yes. They're supposed to uplift what the public wants? The, the people should make that decision. And whether they decide to make that decision based off of their conscious level at that time, and we talk about this all the time, they being evolved to that point. But at the end of the day, it relies on this one thing, consensus of the people making the choice. Yeah. And it, like I said, it may be a wrong choice, but it's not my responsibility or your responsibility with Tartle to say that's wrong. No. Let's not have that happen. It's our responsibility running systems like Tartle to allow people have that choice. Well, l- l- I think this is a perfect example. We polled people about abortion. Yes, we did. And the outcome was shocking to me. I was actually surprised. Yeah, I was surprised too. I was surprised how many people didn't want to give rights yes, to individuals. To, to, to a woman. Right? Yeah. yeah. I was actually shocked. But but you look in it and you have, uh, if you have governments that are built off of a theocracy. Mm-hmm. In, in religions that are predominantly heavy in countries, you're going to have the decision. But if they say that that's what that is, it's not for me to think that I know everything and should come into that country and change it. They will evolve over time. Look, and I'm wrong in a lot of things. Look at history. How many times does someone come in with some sort of religious idea or a new government structure and try to rearrange a country? Mm-hmm. Not to point fingers at the United States and what it tries to do in the Middle East and other areas of the world, what the right. French had tried to do in uh, – you know, Indonesia yeah, I mean, and yeah, I mean, Great Britain. Yeah, and Great Britain with its imperialism. Like, if you think about the context of all of these things, when has it ever been beneficial? Nothing. It upsets the cultural narrative. It upsets what people want. It's where people have existed for thousands of years in their respective cultures. All this volatility shows up because somebody else is determining from a top down approach what's best for them. The way this AI bill should read is that the systems need to be built from the bottom up. The participants have to be engaged 100% with full rights and control over the system and choice not to participate in the algorithms. They should have the choice of removal. And that in place, they should say, these are the things we want and these are the things we do not want. This is how we feel harmed and not harmed. Not for anyone else from a top-down approach to say, this is going to be what's best for you. Because we can look through historical context and what has happened before that is not in your best interest. And there are from right now, in just the first 20, 25 pages of this document, 10% is in the interest of the people. But you're writing this saying that this is in the interest of everybody. But what I'm what this reads very clearly is that none of this is truly designed for the interest of those groups. Well, you know, whether it, what, it's technology. It's just technology. War is technology. Bullets are technology. Fire is technology. Uh, a, a hoe in the ground for farming is technology. Correct. That belongs to the people. It doesn't belong to anybody else. You don't need to go to the government to get a hoe to farm your land. No. Can can I use this? Can you give me protection? I continue to use this. Yeah, I don't want the hoe to chop my my you know to chop my toes off. So we need to design a better hoe that it's safe for the people. People already know when a machine's dangerous. (laughs) You know how dumb are we? We're not sheep, even though they think we are. No, they think we're sheep. And guess what? People make poor choices, but those that's the right of that person to make that choice. And when we start to take those things away. We start to step on the rights of individuals, natural liberties that need to exist. But this right here is not expounding and uplifting those liberties. It's just putting in more systems of control and calling it a bill of rights. You don't have to put a bill in place for something that needs to naturally exist for me because I'm a human being. Right. That doesn't need to be there. Data privacy. You should be protected from abusive data practices via built-in protections. You should have agency over how and about your data is used. Yes. Yes, I should. 100% agency on my data. That is absolutely correct because the things that feed the system are data itself. Well, why don't U.S. government, you be transparent about the data that we have? Share. 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 Let uh, Let let me make the decision. Yeah. Share everything you have on me and let me decide if you're going to put this out here, if I want you to have that information on me. Let me decide whether I want a social security card. Yeah. (laughs) I want the decision. Yeah. Right. Whether I should be involved in in your system or not does the united states government allow you to decide whether or not you get to pay taxes no do they say that you know uh, you get to decide whether or not you're going to participate in social security no the census 
What do they send you on the census and you don't fill it out? They, they say this, you know, you have to do this. This, by is a, this is bylaw. It's a legal requirement. What happens when it, you're saying I have choice, right? Yeah. But I don't. And you'll actually negatively or perversely affect me because I chose to not participate. But you're writing documents saying that, oh, you know, you should, you have full uh, rights over your participation and agency over the things you create. That's what I'm saying. You, 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 the words that you're saying, as usual, are not the actions that you're doing. No, they're not the actions you're doing. And if you want something that actually does what it says, it's going to walk the walk and talk the talk. It's over here at Tartle. Yes. You as a sovereign entity can use it right now. Won't cost you anything. Totally free. Your participation, your effort, and it's only for you to gain through the work that you put in. Not for us at Tartle to decide what's best for you. Come in the most asynchronous and sovereign format to decide what's best for yourself. That's what we're here for. I'm not making you pay for something that should be your own civil liberty, human right to use. There's no discrimination. Come in here. Be a participant. You want real democracy? Here's a technological example. Tell me I'm wrong. 100%. Throw a right hook at me right now and tell me I'm wrong. <laughs> Smack me back in reality, but I think I'm actually in check at this moment. Yeah, and I think it's, I, I think it's when we look at and people are understanding this because it's kind of like mask in in these beautiful sites or social media or mm -hmm. uh, it's mask in these you know progressive thought processes and leaders. So it, and they're wearing t-shirts and 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 you know Gucci tennis shoes and all that. Sure. So it, it looks it looks pretty. It's not like the military industrial complex where there's you know people's heads getting blown off and stuff. Sure. Massively, you know, or drone strikes and stuff mm -hmm. like that. And we watch the videos. This is kind of this, but pe people don't understand your data in controlling your life is more dangerous. The odds of you getting hit by a Raytheon missile is pretty thin. Pretty thin. The odds of you getting your privacy taken away and your rights being taken away and you being tracked every second of the day, the minute that you're on a device or the devices that you have in your home. It's guaranteed. Guaranteed. That's a guarantee. You see what I'm saying? That's an absolute guarantee. And if you're looking at protection of privacy by design and by default, look at this system. Look at this one right here. Privacy by design and default. Data collection and use scope limits right here. You're deciding what the limit is, what's collected. Risk identification. You know how much risk there is. This is high value. We'll say you, you really shouldn't automatically sell something like this. You should realize that this is sensitive stuff. You have every right to do it, but you're made fully aware. You need to know what that risk is. You are educated. And there is privacy preserving security. Some of the finest encryption in the world is used right here to protect your information. You won't find it anywhere else. It's right here. These are the heightened oversight of surveillance. Yeah, protect the public. Sure. We can't survey people. Again, we're technologically barred for it. Limit and pro um, proportionate surveillance. Well, yeah, we don't survey at all. There's no surveying actually occurring. This is all surveillance of user-specific consent every single time you share a piece of data. Brief and direct consent request every single time a transaction occurs. Data access and correction, you have full rights to correct your data and who gets access to it. Consent withdrawal, delete it anytime you want. It's all up to you. Automated system support, you got it. We got it right here. You need walkthrough videos. You need chatbots. You need human elements to come in place and walk you through some sort of issue you have. You need some learning to occur. If you need a stern example for what a bill of rights look like in the technological sphere for society in the United States going forward and any other country on earth, it happens right here at Target. Yeah, 100%. There's no better example of it. Independent we've, evaluation, we've, reporting. We've gone through this, you know, and every single one, what is the solution? The solution right here is Target. Yes. I haven't found a better solution. And I'm not saying that because we're smoking our own dope here. This is the company we're running. I haven't seen a better solution. We created this because there was no solution. Yes. Something, this opportunity was here because it ceased to exist. There was no balance. And people are trying in this lawful format, trying to balance these things out. And you're saying, you know, people should do these things. It's been done since 2017. This is what we've been doing. This is almost six years later. Someone says, ah, this is probably what we should be looking at. Well, guess what? It's created. It's right here. If you want a good use case for how this would work, if you want to write this down, you want quantitative research approach, you want to engage these individuals and make sure that they're appropriate in this manner. United States government, time for you to step up and use TARL and every other corporation that's participating in this aspect. Does that make sense? I, I think any government, if you want to have a conversation, we'd be more than happy to have a conversation with you about bringing the rights back to the people for their data. Yeah. And in any country that's out there that wants to make take this next step in understanding, uh, I think is a huge opportunity to be able to get in with TARL now. I mean, 
how, how much news press and media and everything else would you get when you start bringing uh, you as a government decide to get serious about data privacy? I mean, that, that you would have think, CNN, everybody. Think about the goodwill you built with the public. You remember when uh, El Salvador did Bitcoin? Sure. It'd be the same thing. No, I know. It's the, it's, it's the same thing in terms of the value of the way the public receives. It. Mm-hmm. And I, I'm not going to share the names, but I'm going to applaud all of the enterprises that have come to Turtle to have conversations, to participate in this marketplace. Those are the forward thinking people. Yes. Those are the highest respecting corporations. Those are the true torchbearers for society. And the people that don't show up, shame on you. You're just going to get left in the, you're going to get left in the dust. And who are you going to blame? There's no one to blame but yourself. Yeah. You're going to fall behind. In the nano dust. In the nano dust. (laughs) That's correct. Nano dust is a real thing, ladies and gentlemen. Look it up. Nano dust. You know, then that's that's the gig. I'm slowly coming down off of this massive high of reading this. I have papers everywhere on this desk. Get out of here. I'm tired of reading it. I'm glad everyone I'm joined here on the system. So let's, you know, just in in brief of this for ones that are watching, if you're new to uh TCAST, let's talk a little bit about the turtle system. Can we do that? Yes, I'd love to. Okay. So in the uh in, let's give it a little bit of history. Right. So back in the early days here at Tartle. Um, oh, I was going to ask you, because um, I, I heard a, a statement yesterday about like a lot of Twitter board not even being on Twitter. Do you log in to Tartle or are you part of Tartle being the CEO? Yes. Oh, okay. I participate in the system. I share my data. <laughs> yeah, I do too. I was just, no, I, I, I earn off of well, sharing data. I, I do I data do packets. That. I think if I'm going to you know, be running a system like yeah, this. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I, I, I don't want to be like shocked me when I heard that. Yeah, it's like. Uh, it's it was so on funny. CNBC. They were talking like, oh, you know, like some of the board doesn't even use it or they're not even on it. No, it's comical. It's like one of those things like, oh, we're a car manufacturer. Like you run, you own the car manufacturing process, right? For like Ford. Guy drives a Ferrari. Mm-hmm. What's going on with that? That doesn't make sense. Mm-mm. Oh, I prefer a Maybach, even though I work for BMW. I have a Rolls Royce bringing me to the Ford factory. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't. It's like, what in the heck? Create a high-end car and drive it. Yeah, create a high-end car and drive it then. I think Hyundai did that, didn't they? They did. They made some fantastic stuff. Yeah. Absolutely fantastic. I mean, come stuff. on. I mean, re- uh, you know, really, at the end of the day, this is what we're talking about. It, it's it's smoke and mirrors and words. They mean nothing. nothing. They mean nothing. There's nothing. <laughs> It's the action that you take yes. as a corporation or as a government. And that action, it's the right action. That's the one that we'll speak to. That's what builds goodwill with the people. That's how real democracy occurs. Yes, yes, 100%. Now you're really doing it. But how, okay, let's say screw the government, screw corporations. How do I have the power of my data? And what can I do as an individual? How can we create a movement? Mm. A data movement. Awesome. Globally. Yeah. The, the, so the first step to create a data movement is you go to Tartle.co. Right. Okay. You're going to look at this. You'll be like, oh, this is a little interesting. I've never heard about this. I've never heard about these people. Yeah, that's correct. You haven't. Right? It's growing. You've been inundated with all these other ads out there that I'm trying to bide for your attention. We're trying to meet you at a point when you're ready to accept it. That's it. In an educational format, we're not going to coerce you into doing anything. We're going to show you that there's a tool available to elevate what you are doing online, to take the extension of your digital life and apply appropriate rights to it. Very human rights. And so when you go to Tartle.co, you take those first steps in this revolution of taking that data back into your control. And rather than having it be an asset to all these other companies that were making a mint off of you, you start to make the mint off of yourself. You start to take that data and turn it into an annuity for your future, mm, for your right, financial right. benefit. Yes, yes. But you get control over the process. You decide what gets shared. Everything about the aspect of the work you have put in, your time online regarding your digital identity is yours to own. And you come to Tartle to own that specific thing. The whole point in the design of Tartle since 2017 was to create a marketplace that gave people the option to take control of their information, secure it storily, and share it with people for financial incentive. It ceased to exist. There was no public mechanism for people to step in and say, hey, this is actually mine. I want responsibility over these things. People come to Tartle to take responsibility. They come to Tartle to educate themselves. They come to Tartle to financially uplift themselves and their families. They come to Tartle to participate in sharing towards causes they care about. Yeah. And it all happens through the mechanism of moving data from party A to party B. And you get to know when someone wants to come in like Walmart wants to buy your data. You get to know when somebody wants to use your information as a lead so they can sell you a service. 
you gave them that info. Now you know why you're being contacted. You chose to be a part of that conversation. You've determined what is best for you at what time. It's a totally different approach. And that's what Turtle is. That's how it started. Those are the roots. And technologically, every single fundamental function of those human rights are built into the system itself. Because if you're going to spend more and more of your life interacting with these automated systems, more and more of your time creating this data, it should be for your benefit. That is your work. Yeah, it's it's so interesting. I, I was thinking of this the other day. Um, just pretend your data is your children. And you have a babysitter. Mm. Now, the babysitter can go and just be very astute and watch you. Like sit there and watch you, see how you interact with your children, and then try to imitate those processes. And it may start exhibiting force upon your children by learning all the different things that it saw from you. Or would you prefer that babysitter to come to you and ask you questions for clarity? I like that. What would you prefer? I want the clarity. Why? Because yes. I'm the parent. Yes. It's my child. I want to determine how it's raised. Right? Because it's my responsibility, frankly. Not for me to pass responsibility on to someone else and determine what's best for the child. <laughs> but it's it, it's it's that passive aggressive, creepy watching mm-hmm. and then making decisions based off of things that it's watched is what is happening now with your data. Yeah. And it's it's serving you ads or whatever it may be, um, giving you suggestions, selling the data to third parties. You know, and then you're getting weird phone calls. We're all getting these in and all the time calls, all this, all of that, getting weird emails, whatever it may be. All of that is, is this passive aggressive babysitter making decisions for you Mm -hmm. based off of watching you and the ill intent. It may not be, it's not evil wanting to do bad things with your kids, but the better approach is the turtle approach. And that's directly have that clear conversation with an individual, bring the person involved in and that, then, and then allowing the parent to say yes or no to that. Yeah. Give them the choice. Yes. The choice of participation. Yes. The choice of outcome. Those things have not existed for a long time. And if you want to be a part of the revolution, every single person, and let's just look at this in a logical context, every single person that joins Tartle, every next person, every plus one to the entire human user base of Tartle increases the constituent value of the entire marketplace for everyone. Mm, yes. Why? Because the data that's being tracked and abused gets pulled into a system where a value gets appropriated to it. And now that asset becomes securitized. It gets put into the control of the actual owner. So the value for everybody is now increased. More people are coming in to own and hold and control their assets to determine when it's shared. The value is naturally increasing for every new person that joins. So when you are actually going out, talk about this for a referral program. When you go out and share this, right? The link for people to sign up. What are you doing? You're increasing the lifetime value of your data. 100%. And you're increasing the value of the data for every other person. What other system has that sort of goodwill in it? What other system can directly, quantitatively benefit that many human lives at once? Yes. I haven't seen one. But you have the power to come and join Tartle right now as a buyer or seller to participate in this. For the control, management, sharing, and understanding of data globally. Every single new individual human being that signs up is increasing the value for everyone at large. So if you want a real revolution, if you want people to come to this and you really want that rich value, if you want to participate, if you want to be a part of your narrative and have control over it, you sign up on Tartle. And there's no reason for you not to do so. It's under 100% your control, your choice, your time. It's not for us to force or coerce you into doing anything. Tartle is made for the human being. I love that. All right? And with that, ladies and gentlemen, we are done being on the air today. Thank you very much. I used to live in Philadelphia, by the way. <laughs> da, 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 yeah, the, the steps over here. Adrian, Adrian. I love it. With that, I'm going to close up shop over here. Jason, can you just uh, uh, sing us out? Give yes, me- Tartle.co. Sign up now. If you haven't signed up, T A R T L E dot C O. It's free to sign up. It takes about uh, 12 seconds, 13 seconds, depending on how fast you are. 